Hey guys, Merry Christmas. So in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing my Christmas cook with me. So I'm gonna be sharing five Christmas desserts as well as our main dish for Christmas. So every year for Christmas, I always make um, chicken and noodles with mashed potatoes and rolls. And the reason that we do chicken and noodles for Christmas is because I always do a big dinner for Thanksgiving. So just to make it easier on myself, I do like to do a simpler meal. Um, this is a crock pot meal and all the desserts today are no bake um, except for the cookies. So if you guys want to see what I am making for Christmas this year, then just keep watching. Okay, so it is the 23rd, the day before Christmas Eve, and we are gonna be hosting Christmas Eve at our house. So I'm going to get all of the baking done today. So here's just an overview of everything that you will need for all of the dessert recipes. So um, lots of chocolate chips, white chocolate chips, peanut butter chocolate chips, some almond bark, marshmallows, baking soda, cocoa, sprinkles if you want them, um, some oats, sugar, brown sugar, flour, and then some pretzels. We decided to do the mini pretzels. Um, they actually have even smaller pretzels than this, but um, I didn't want to be coating chocolate pretzels all day long, so <laughs> I got this size. And then you'll need two of these um, butter puff corns. Um, so yeah, that is everything that you will need. And then here is my list of things that I'm gonna be making today. So chocolate covered pretzels, Christmas crack, no bake cookies, Christmas dream bars, uh, chocolate chip cookies. And then tomorrow for dinner, we're gonna be making um, chicken and noodles, mashed potatoes and rolls. And then I'm actually gonna be go ahead and, um, well, maybe not. I need to prep the, the uh, green bean casserole for Christmas day when we take it to my husband's aunt's house. So that is everything that we're gonna be baking and we are just gonna go ahead and jump right in. I've got a lot to do, so we gotta get it done. Okay, so before we get started, I just wanted to share with you guys just a little hack. Um, so I actually do have a dishwasher, but it is broken, so I've not had one for a little while now, but um, a little trick to just keep yourself organized, just make sure that all of your dishes are washed before you get started and then have a sink full of water so that you can put dirty dishes in there, especially whenever it comes to like Christmas baking when you're dealing with a bunch of chocolate. Um, it is really easy for that chocolate to get stuck on your utensils. So I just like to have a sink full of water so that the dishes can be soaking. And when the sink gets full, I can wash them. And then I don't have to worry about having a ton of dishes, um, you know, at the end whenever I'm done baking. So that's just one of my tips. So for this first recipe, you're gonna need some peanut butter chocolate chips some milk chocolate chips, some peanut butter, some mini marshmallows. My kids have already opened these. Um, and then also some of these Christmas M&Ms. These are optional, of course, but um, I do recommend these. And I had to get this in the stocking stuffer aisle because my Walmart did not have the Christmas M&Ms anymore. Um, so if you can't find the regular Christmas M&Ms, check your stocking stuffer aisle. So. That is everything that we will need. So we're going to melt the chocolate chips and the peanut butter, and then we'll come back and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so now that the chocolate and the peanut butter is melted, I'm just gonna add in marshmallows. I'm gonna start with like half of the bag. And we'll just mix it and see what it looks like. And of course, I have my little helper here. That's, uh, I mean this, that's. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Okay, looks like we might need to add just a little bit more. Because we want them to be coated, but not like, not coated, you know? peanut butter or as much chocolate off this as I can and then we will put this to the side because we'll use it to scrape the bowl later okay so I have these hey thank you so I have these little muffin tins with silicone cups in them I figured this would be easier to do than putting it in a um, casserole dish like the recipe says 
And then I have this little three tablespoon um, cookie scoop. So I'm just gonna scoop them in here and call it good. So now we're gonna use the M&Ms and just sprinkle a few on top. Ah. We'll just do like two or three just to make it a little festive. We'll just put them in the fridge and let them set up and then we'll peel them off whenever they set up. Okay, so this next recipe is Christmas crack. So I have just melted one bag of white chocolate chips in here and then I added a tablespoon and a half of vegetable oil to make it um, like a pourable consistency. So um, you're gonna need two of these Chester's popcorn and the butter flavor. So it's two bags to one bag of chocolate chips. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dump these on these baking trays and just kind of make them as evenly as possible and kind of like push them all together so you're getting chocolate on the popcorn and not like on the paper. Um, here we go. I'm gonna take the other bag and just fill up this and fill it back. And ideally you would do this with um, like parchment paper, but I found out that I don't have any, so I'm using this. What's it? Perfect. That's 100. Okay, so? Yeah. Let's not count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, mm -hmm. 16, 18, 19, 18, 16, 18. 19, okay, so now you're just gonna take your chocolate and try and drizzle it the best you can. Sorry, I forgot 
like your hand? No. <laughs> Why? Because that's gross. It's mine. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my Is your hand sturdy? Yeah, very. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'll take a bite of it. You just wait, okay? Yeah, I want to get these. These teeth. When you're, when you're done. When you're done with. Don't touch that, sissy. Put that down. Put it down. Put it down, please. Okay. When, when you're done with all those. Okay. And then when I feel like it is evened out enough, or when I feel like it's coated enough, I'm going to even it back out. And we will sprinkle some. Sprinkle okay. So I'm going to start out with red, I think. Okay, so here's what it looks like close up. I want that. We will just um, put these aside and wait till they set up, and then we will um, put them on our platter. Okay, so we are gonna go ahead and get started on the no-bake cookies for the second yeah. time. I went ahead and prepped everything. So in here, I have one and three-fourths cup of sugar, half a cup of milk, half a cup of butter that I have softened, four tablespoons of cocoa. Um, like cocoa powder and then over here I've got three cups of oats I am using rolled oats because that's all I had but the recipe calls for quick oats so this is gonna be my first time using the rolled oats and I'll let you know how they turn out if you can use that or not but we'll see and then I also um, have my peanut butter over here to the side because I'm gonna need a half a cup of peanut butter when this starts boiling so I'm gonna go ahead and get the heat turned on and we will let this come up to a boil and then I'll be right back with you Okay, so everything has started to melt finally. It's all coming to that consistency. Um, so I'm just looking for those bubbles now. You do kind of want to, I wouldn't say continuously stir, but just like stir it, watch it, make sure that it's not getting burnt to the edges. Um, because you do not want to burn your chocolate. That would be not a good thing. So I'm just kind of waiting for them bubbles to come up and then we will set a timer. So I have made a lot of no-bake cookies in my lifetime. <laughs> and um, I have tried a bunch of trial and errors. And the one thing that has made my no-bake cookies perfect is the amount of time that I boil the chocolate. So as soon as it comes up to a boil, you wanna set a timer, boil it for one minute while you continuously stir it. And when that one minute up is up, you immediately remove it from that heat and then add your peanut butter in. So it's kind of starting to bubble just a little bit. You can tell that it's getting hot, but it's not quite there yet. So this is something that you do have to babysit. You don't want to walk away and, you know, go do a little laundry or anything. But, um, but you do have to kind of babysit it and just make sure that everything is looking the way that it's supposed to. So yeah i'm just waiting for those bubbles to come up and there's a few bubbles that are starting right now okay so it is starting to come away from the sides it's starting to boil from the sides so i'm going to give it one more good last stir make sure that it continues to boil while i'm stirring it and then we're going to set our timer and you're going to want to keep stirring it and um just get ready for that peanut butter because you're going to want to put that peanut butter in. Also, something to note, the reason why you need to stir it continuously is because this mixture is very, very thick and you don't want it popping in your face. Got about 30 seconds left. 
somebody on Facebook the other day was asking for recipes for no bake cookies and somebody said to boil this for five minutes. I was like, no, do not boil that for five minutes. You'll have the hardest cookies of your life. <laughs> Got about 10 seconds left. Ouch, it's popping on me. Turn the heat off, remove it from the heat. Just kind of let that peanut butter melt a little bit. There we go, it's starting to melt. Bristol, what are you doing over there? Making messes. There we go. Okay, so that's exactly what you want it to look like. The peanut butter is all melted. So I'm going to add this to my oats over here. Um, something else that is very important, make sure that you have your oats ready. I'm just gonna stir this up real quick. Like I said, you've got to work quickly. So I'm using my one and a half tablespoon cookie scoop. I just got this from Walmart. Um, I don't know the brand, it doesn't say anywhere. I can look on my grocery pickup and I'll put it on the screen for you. Um, yeah, those are much better cookies. So you guys will definitely have to let me know if you make any of these recipes. Um, most of these recipes are like family favorites. So as I mentioned in my Thanksgiving cook with me, um, I, my mom was not, is not part of my life anymore. Mommy, um, look at that. So all the recipes that I have made have been like my own, like trial and error, um, Pinterest from friends, from family of friends. Like that sort of thing. Um, my mommy, grandma. Mommy, I want this to be a cookie. My grandma, which is my mom's mom, I'm I'm really close with her. Um, but she makes literally everything from scratch. I get of the day. And I just don't have time for that. I have two kids. I work full time. I just don't have time to make everything from scratch. Um, so I do have some of her recipes, but they're definitely not my favorites. Um, so yeah, I've pretty much just like made my own recipe portfolio <laughs> and this is um what I'm doing in my life so I actually made my sister a recipe binder for Christmas I want and my sissy I want my sissy you are sissy you don't have a sissy <laughs> and um I gave her like some of my favorite recipes so she was really excited I want that you better calm down little girl <laughs> I know you think it's funny, but I don't think it is. Dad. Oh, it's a pancake. your pancake. Don't budge. Oh, my God. Oh, gosh. i got to figure out how to. Okay. Pizza. Just put that with that. Okay, here. so here's what they look like. I the want to they're a little darker than what I normally like, but um, I think they look good. So we'll see how they turn out. I will let you guys know. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and get started on the chocolate covered pretzels. So I just melted some almond bark here. I don't have as much as I should because I burnt it on the stove. So I don't recommend that. But <laughs> So I'm just going to start out by just doing a few in here just to coat them. You have to work really quickly with these, I know that for sure.
So here's what they look like. I did not get very much out of it, but I think this will be plenty for the amount of people that are going to be in my house. So I think I'm happy with this. Um, I did put blue sprinkles on them, but as you can see, they don't really show up. So I stopped doing that and my hands are like oh, stained Tom. blue. So anyway, here's what they look like. We're gonna move on to the next thing. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started on the chocolate chip cookies. Um, I'm gonna use this recipe for the chocolate chip cookies and then also the cookies that my kids are gonna be decorating. The second batch is just not gonna have any chocolate chips in them. So in this bowl, I have two and a half cups of uh, flour, one teaspoon of baking soda, and a half a teaspoon of sea salt. So we'll just set that aside. In this big bowl, we're gonna do um, two cups of brown sugar. Maybe. I think what is so unique about this recipe is that it uses all brown sugar. Um, and I think that's what makes it taste really, really good. And then I have a stick of butter that is at room temperature. I melted it in the microwave. Um, and then we just need to cream this together. Okay, and then you add in two eggs and one and a half teaspoon of vanilla extract. So I've got a half a teaspoon here. I'm just using imitation vanilla. So I'm just gonna do three of these. Cause that is so much easier. And then we'll just mix this in together. Okay, and you just want to mix it until it gets fluffy like this. Um, it kind of looks like a fluffy consistency. And then you'll just add in about half of the flour mixture and mix it together. So now I'm gonna add in this bag of semi-sweet chocolate chips. I like to do the minis. And I'll do like half and then add in the other half after I get it all mixed together because it is very, very thick. I think I'm just gonna do like three fourths of the bag because there's a lot of chocolate chips in here. Okay, and that is it. We'll just um, spin these onto a baking sheet. Bake them at 350 for 10 minutes. It is very important to do it for 10 minutes. Okay, so I've got all my cookie sheets up here. Um, I'm going to spray them all and my trick with this is to make things so much faster is to go ahead and put all of your cookies on your pan so when you take one out you can put another one in.
if I can find this ice cream scoop, I will link it down below for you because it is really, really good. It's, it's withstanding this thick um, cookie dough, so I, I definitely recommend it. So here's what they look like about 30 seconds after they come out. I did get just a little bit too many on this pan, but they're going to be good. I'll take them off in about two or three minutes when they um, harden just a little bit, when they like deflate a little bit and they're easier to work with. So. Okay, so it is now the next day. I'm getting started on the chicken and noodles. So I've got two cups of chicken broth here. I use the Better Than Bouillon um, soup base for this. And then I have one can of cream and chicken, one can of cream of mushroom. And I'm just gonna mix that all together um, right here in the crock pot. It's just so much easier to do it that way. And um, then I will add the chicken, but I will leave the recipe that I use linked down below. Um, it's super easy. I actually think I found it on Facebook and I just added it to my Pinterest. Um, but this is such a crowd pleaser. If you guys love chicken and noodles, you definitely should try this. I'm just mixing all this together and then in my big crock pot, I think I did four chicken breast, maybe a fifth really, really small one. Um, I just had these in my freezer and I laid them out overnight to thaw out. They were not all the way thaw yet, but um, it was good enough for me to be able to get them out. So I'm just putting those in there. I will pop a top on it and cook it for about five hours. Also, the recipe calls for a whole stick of butter, but I just added about a half a stick. I feel like a whole stick is just a little bit too much. So whenever I'm hosting, I like to be as organized as possible. So I've just laid everything out and then I have little post-it notes um, showing where I want to put things. And this has helped me so much. Um, it's definitely a really good tip. I think I learned it from somebody on YouTube. I don't remember who, but it has really helped me stay organized and really minimize my stress level whenever I'm hosting. Okay, so it's been about five hours and the chicken is done. So I'm just gonna remove it with some tongs into a mixing bowl. And I'm actually going to use my hand mixer to shred it. Um, it's the best way that I found. Some people use their stand-up mixer, but I don't have one. So I just use my hand mixer and it works like a charm. Um, this chicken was a little bit tough. I don't really know why, maybe because it was um, like lower quality, but I did have to break it up a little bit with the tongs and then go back in with, with a couple forks and break up some of the bigger pieces. Um, with this particular recipe, I do like to have a little bit bigger chunks of chicken, so I don't want to shred it all the way, but just break it up enough where people can pick out the chicken if they don't want it. Okay, so here is the star of the show. These are the egg noodles that I use. Um, they are Reams frozen egg noodles. My Walmart only has a 24 ounce, so that is what I use. I'm sure they have smaller and larger ones, but the 24 ounce is what we use. So you're just gonna dump it in your crock pot and just make sure that all of the noodles are coated with the mixture. And then um, I'm just seasoning with pepper and some parsley to give it a little bit of color. Um, I don't add any salt because the broth has salt in it and then like the soups have salt in it. So I don't want to over salt it. I always figure, you know, if people want salt, they can always put some more on their actual plate. But whenever I'm serving a crowd like that, I try not to do too many seasonings. Um, and then I'm just going to add the cooked chicken to the top of the noodles since it's already cooked. Um, I just want to kind of put it on top and just submerge it a little bit to get the juices back in there. But um, I'm not going to put the chicken in before I put the noodles, if that makes sense.
So that is going to be it for this year's Christmas Cook With Me. I hope that you guys enjoyed and I hope that it gave you some ideas if you are still needing some ideas for Christmas. Um, if you are new here, please subscribe. If you enjoy, please give it a thumbs up. But other than that, I will see you in my next one. Merry Christmas, guys.